And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, thy prophets, and to the saints, 
and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them with destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his kingdom of and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great haste. In, uh, in 17, the folks there in heaven are instantaneous to worship. They're quick to worship. They're wanting to worship. They're instantaneous on it. They're intelligent. They know who they're worshiping. They're saying it's, oh, Lord God Almighty. And they're ready to worship. And things is good in heaven. They're happy. But in 18, the nations were angry. On earth, they're mad. In uh, in it's judgment on earth. In heaven, it's jubilation. On earth, it's rage. There's road rage going on. All kinds of... In heaven, it's rejoicing going on. On earth, it's cursing. In heaven, they're crowding. On earth, it's woe. In heaven, it's worship. On earth, it's woeful. In heaven, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I'd be sure, I'd be sure that I was getting there. They're worshiping him because of his triumphs. Thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And they're acknowledging his power, that everything's right on time, that he's still in control, that he's still the creator, that he's still running the universe, and nothing escapes him. And he knows exactly what's going on. And then uh, that... The Lord opens up the temple in verse 19 here. He's been opening up things. In chapter 4, He opened up the book. Yeah. In chapter 6, He opened up the seals and poured Him out. In chapter 9, hell's opened up. Smoke builds out. Fire, brimstone. But here, the temple's opened up. Pretty soon, we're going to see the Holy of Holies opened up. The tabernacle. And then the books are opened up in chapter 20. He likes to open things. A lot of things opened up here in Revelation. Carl Johnson, you pray for me, please. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for staying with us. Lord, we will ask your blessing to be with him as a piece of this place. Just give that more to us. Amen. Amen. Okay, Revelation chapter 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman. Now we dwelled on that a while back. And uh, I know I'm not reading it exactly right. There's no comma <coughs> there. But uh, it's still the truth. It's still a fact. And these first two verses are describing the woman. It doesn't change anything when you read it the way Brother Peter reads it. It's still about the woman. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. And the moon was under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Now this woman, I'll read it again and see if you can get the whole picture, but it's a picture of Israel, is who it is. Let's see if we can get, there's uh, going to be four women in Revelation. Here we got a suffering woman. In chapter 17, there's going to be a bloody harlot. In chapter 18, there's going to be an arrogant queen. And in chapter 19, there's going to be a pure bride. Amen. Amen. Here's this. See if you can see Israel here. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Now, we came through some of the Gospels a while back. Israel as a whole has rejected the Messiah. There's some exceptions. There's a few that's got in. But as a whole, they've rejected. God has, is not done with them. He's just set them aside for a little bit. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. You know, S-U-N, S-O-N. And the moon was under her feet. The church hadn't come along yet. Now these first five verses are like a history lesson of the past. Talk about the past here. And the moon was under her feet. The church hadn't come about yet here in the past. And up when Israel was started. And upon her head, a crown of twelve stars. That'd be uh, Jacob's sons, wouldn't it? 
And she, being a child, wonder who that is. Who? That's going to be Jesus, isn't it, Brother Richard? That's right, that's Jesus. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and paid to be delivered. Uh, we're going to see the enemy's purpose, purpose in this chapter. The first five verses, like I said, are the devil's hatred for Israel in the past. The rest of the chapter is going to be the devil's hatred for Israel in the future. In the future. He couldn't get the son, so he's after the woman that bore He's out to destroy everything that reminds him of God on earth. That's the, that's the devil's purpose. That's his purpose. And uh, here in the, remember, we've been in the great tribulation period, and uh, chapter 12 is the devil's ruling passion. We're going to see his passion here. That's to destroy everything that reminds him of God. The next chapter, 13, is going to be the devil's prince. Now, for those that maybe are new today, we've been trying to paint a New Testament timeline up here, letting the double doors equal the cross of Calvary, and then down through here is 2,013 years. The next thing that had to happen here at the edge of the table, we're letting represent 2013, and the thing, the next thing to happen, and it might be today. Uh, we right. might be home before we get home. That's right. The next thing to happen is we're going up is the rapture. It starts a seven-year period, and in heaven, it's uh, divided. First, the judgment seat of Christ for Bible believers, and then the marriage supper. Down here, we're learning the seven-year period on earth is divided. We've got the tribulation period, and last week, we started the great tribulation period. At the end of this seven-year period, the Lord over there, He came back for us. Then He's going to come back with us. And then He's going to straighten everything out. It won't be the Democrats or Republicans then. It won't be Congress. It'll be Him. He's going to rule and reign. And, and with us, it'll be a 1,000 year honeymoon here on earth. It starts right here when we come back. He straightens everything out. Then for a 1,000 years, we live with Him. He lives with us. Right here. And uh, the devil is trying to destroy all this. There's uh, Here we saw a great wonder. There's a great wonder. In verse 3, there's a great red dragon. There's four greats in this chapter. A great red dragon. And then here uh, in chapter 12, down toward the end, we see great wrath. It's the devil. It's, uh, he's fixing things up. And then in verse 14, a great eagle right there in the beginning. And uh, this nation Israel is the one that's got it to pay. Her sufferings are going to be similar to Joseph's sufferings. In the pit and in the prison, it's going to be a three and a half years of great tribulation. Great tribulation. It's going to be prolonged sufferings for the woman. The cause of her sufferings, you can see in verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. I'm talking ugly. <laughs> That's why he has to hide himself and come in disguise as an angel of light. If he came looking like this, no one would get tricked. It's the booger man is what we're talking about. You can see it again. Why, why Israel is uh, punished here at verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. And a dragon is nothing but a serpent with wings that can fly. That's, that's the booger mass. And verse 4, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Remember I said it's a history lesson, the first five verses. This is when he fell the first time right here. And did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to 
or to devour her child as soon as it was born. Remember Herod? Killed all the two-year-olds and under trying to get... That's because the devil. That's the devil. He let the devil use it. And this is the devil's hatred for the woman. The first large-scale attempt to get rid of the Jews was by Pharaoh. He had Moses and the children of Israel up against the Red Sea. God took care of them again. And then, right before that, when Moses saw the burning bush that was not consumed, that bush was a picture of Israel that's not been consumed. The world has hated her. The devil has hated her for centuries. They can't do nothing with her. God's taken care of her. She's been hated by the Gentiles. Uh, Israel cannot be assimilated into the nations. She never gets lost and mingled in with us. She's always separate. And not only that, the, she can't be destroyed as a nation. The only nation on earth that was dispersed for 2,000 years and become a nation again in 1958. Right. Never happened before in history. Right. The Jews, Israel, proved that the Bible's true. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. If you happen to have any doubt. <coughs> the devil hated the Jews. Gentiles hated the Jews. The world hated the Jews. England, who's been a refuge for almost everybody, 1,000 years ago, Canute banished all Jews from England. Edward I drove every last one of them out of England. France and Germany blamed the Black Plague on the Jews. In 1882, there were outbreaks of atrocities against the Jews in Russia a long time before Hitler. In 1894, the Dreyfus Affair in France uh, made a Jew a scapegoat for their national problem. And then the Holocaust, six million Jews obliterated by Hitler. That's, uh, but the promised seed of the woman came through. Right. He got through anyhow. Herod slew all the babies but him. Christ came. Yes. Satan couldn't stop him. He couldn't conquer it. The Lord was manifest and He made or will make short work of the devil, demons, disease, death, and disaster. He conquered it all on Calvary. The Lord, He is the winner. It's good to be on the winning side. The Lord gives us the victory over Him, over His powers, over His principalities. The enemy can't hinder it, can't control it. Look in the, let's look back now in verse, uh, I think we're on five now. And she brought forth a man child. That's the Lord. That's, that's she's Israel. Who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. We're coming down to that. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Who was it? Who's the child? That's Jesus. That's the resurrection right there. That's the resurrection. Now, this is the devil's hatred of Israel in the past. There's a 2,000-year gap between verse 5 and verse 6. Now we're going into his hatred of Israel in the future. It skips the present day, church age. But starting in verse 6 now, we're right in the middle of the tribulation right here. Getting ready to start the great tribulation takes up from chapter 11. And the woman fled into the wilderness, the woman's Israel again, for she had the place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. How long was that? Three and a half years. Already calculated out here. And uh, uh, over here, Verse 14, it's the great eagle that's going to be taken care of her. And I hope that's America. I hope it turns out that way. I can't tell you that, but I hope that's the way it turns out. Verse 7, and there was a war in heaven. Now many times we fight wars in our heart. 
Sometimes we fight wars in our mind. Yeah. yeah. But every war is fought in hell. <coughs> prayer is a war. When you go to prayer, you go to yeah. warfare. Yeah. Yeah. And you get that war fought up in heaven. Yeah. And we can just leave it up there then. We don't have to worry about it. You're right. But here's a war that's fought in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. I get a witness right there. Amen. Amen. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. The devil got kicked out of heaven. Verse 9, and the great dragon was cast out. In case you're wondering who that is, it's that old serpent. And in case you're wondering who that is, it's the one that's called the devil. Yeah. And in case you're wondering who that is, he's also called Satan. Amen. Which deceiving. Can I get a witness right there? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. The whole world. Remember when you used to see? Remember when you was in darkness? Yeah. Remember when you saw the light? Yeah. He was cast out into the earth. And these angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brother is cast down, which accuseth them before our God day and night. In the past, up in verses uh, verse 4, the devil got kicked out of heaven into the air. And he's been the prince of power of the air now, working havoc. But he could go back and forth. He could go and accuse Rick. And it, you remember, he doesn't have to make up lies on us. Right. All he has to do is tell the truth. Yeah. Right. Well, we mess up where I mess up so many times. That's true. But he's, after this day, he can't go back to do that no more. He's kicked out of the air to the earth. No more access to heaven. He can't go back and accuse us no more after this. And it's about in the middle here, about the time of the end of the judgment seat. And after that, they're not going to be talking about our vices. It's going to be about our victories. Right. After that. Yeah. It's when he says, well done. It's about that time when he says, well done. It's about where we're at right now. We're in the middle in both places. Yeah. Good. A little bit later on. He's going to get kicked out of the earth into hell. Right. And a little bit after, he's going to be out for a little bit. And after that, he's going to be out out for just a little bit. And then he's going to be kicked into the lake of fire forever. Right. And ever. That's chapter 20. We're hitting them. Yeah. We're going to be over there. Talk about the liar. That's what I'm talking about. It'd be no longer the prince there. <laughs> Well, verse 11 now. Here's the overcome. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. Any overcomers in here? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Who is the overcomer anyway? He that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Hey, anybody like that in here? Anybody believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Yeah. Yeah. Makes you an overcomer according to the Bible. It's in black and white and it's in there to stay. <laughs> Excuse me. And by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. I think that's uh, probably Brother Rick's problem, the American problem, that uh, we love our lives yeah. too much. Yeah. Here, these love not their lives unto death. Therefore, rejoice. Uh, they're going to get to worshiping again. Get back to re rejoicing. Therefore, rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. That's going to be us at this time, by the way. And woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he had but a short yeah. time. I tell you what he's doing right now. He's putting this thing in the full press. Yeah. He's putting the pressure. He knows. He's done read. He read the last chapter too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he knows his time is about yeah. that. Verse 13, and when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman, Israel, 
which brought forth the man child, Jesus. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where there is where where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. How long is that? That's three and a half again, isn't it? Just like last week. Uh, if a time is one year and times is two years, and then you got a half a year, that's still three and a half. From the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. The devil's upset. This woe is his rage against Israel and against the saints of God. And many are going to be driven to salvation, to the Lord. Well, the ones that haven't heard. Israel, remember, the 144,000. And, and a number that no man could number them. The time factor gets the devil on the ball in uh, verse 13. And when the dragon saw, time motivates him. Time. And then there's the tribulation factor. Uh, he can't get to the sun, so he goes after the woman that birthed him. And Israel's going to be hated and hidden and hunted. But God's going to help him. God's going to help her just like He helps me and you. And then the third thing that gets him here is the testimony. The testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, let's look at some things here. How the devil's wrath was against Israel in the past. He, he tried to make slaves out of her for one thing. Let's look at it in Exodus 1.22 chart. Tried to make slaves out of them, murdered them, uh, did make slaves out of them. But let's look at Exodus 2, starting in verse 9. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it, and the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, just like the God, uh, just like God protected G baby Jesus from Herod, here he protects Moses from Pharaoh. <coughs> Let's look at it again. The enemy tried to drown Israel. Exodus 14, 9 and 10 charge. <coughs> taken us away to die in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? 
Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die here in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, that he will show to, to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. The devil hates Israel, but again and again, God protects it. Exodus 16, 3, charge. <clears throat> and the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when, he, when we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into the wilderness to kill us whole assembly with hunger. The devil tried to starve Israel to death. But look in verse 13. And it came to pass that at even the quails came up and covered the camp. And get some hunters say amen right here. He burned hunters in here. And in the morning the dew lay round about the host. And, that, and when the dew that lay was going up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a small round thing, as small as a hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wist not what it was. And Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, and over for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Israel did so and gathered some more and some less. And when they did meet it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no right. And they gathered every man according to his eating. How about a witness right there? Anybody hungry? How about yesterday? Everybody, anybody not eat yesterday? Lord taking care of us just like He did right, Israel. Right. I kind of noticed that as I went through here. He tried to starve them, but it didn't work out. He tried to tempt them. Exodus 32, verse 1 and 8, charge. Exodus 32, 1 and 8. It's not a one verse answer that Brother Rick can read back to you. And the devil's going to tempt us, and we need not to yield. The devil tempted Israel. The devil tried to curse Israel. Numbers 23 7, charge. Tried to capture Israel. Second Kings seventeen six. Charles. Second Kings seventeen six.
actually he did capture them. And you know, sometimes he captures us. Again, we know they get delivered, but it wasn't an easy thing. And it won't be easy if we get slick and let him capture us. It won't be an easy, quick, one verse answer. It'll be complicated. John the 127 chart. Guess what? He tries to drown this. <laughs> One, what did I say? How about 17? That's my penmanship. Now the Lord had appeared, had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Let's start chapter 2, I think. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly. And said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell. The devil tried to drown Israel, but the God delivered him. God delivered her again. Again. Let's look at it in uh, Daniel 3.19. Tries to burn Israel. He hates her. He hates us. He hates you. But God, but God, verse 20, and He commanded the most mighty men that were in His army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fire, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to throw them in. It killed those. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. And rose up in haste and spake and said to these counselors, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? And they answered and said to him, True, O king. And he answered, Lo, I see four men loose. That's Jesus. That's the one that keeps delivering Israel. Walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt. And the form of the four is like the Son of God. He tried to devour Israel. It, uh, the enemy did. Look over chapter 6. 16 and 17, Charles. This wasn't a lion's den, it was a den of lions. There was lions in it. A lion's den might not have none in it, but this one had a in it. Verse 18, And the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in his haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel! Servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then said the then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. Don't miss that one. And the king commanded that they brought those men which had accused Daniel. And they cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children, 
their wives and the lions had the mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den before they hit bottom. And the king, and then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations and languages, which dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. That'd be a good decree. Let's present that to Congress. For he is the living God. Amen. And steadfast forever. Amen. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. That's what we're studying is the end, by the way. And he delivereth and rescueth. And he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus, Persia. Last one, Esther 5.14, Charlie. The devil hates Israel. He hates you. He hates the church. He's out to destroy anything that reminds him of God. Esther 5.14. The devil tried to hang Israel. Mordecai was a faithful Jew. Let's look at him over in chapter 7, verse 10. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. Let's pray. Dear God, you've been so good to us. Lord, you've preserved Israel, your people, time and time again. And you're going to do it for the bride. So over 19, it'll be a pure bride. We're thanking you for it. Thanking you for writing it down. In Jesus' name.